Hello, my name is Ed Pope. I'll talk about warehouse robotics and automatic guided vehicles. The history of the warehouse robotics is surprisingly in the 1950s, Barrett Electronics Corporation came out with the first guided vehicle. They use overhead wire that the robot would follow. They figured out in 1954 they could bury the wire in the floor and the robot would track the wire and it basically was just a tugger uh, AGV. They called it a guidematic back then. In 1973, Volvo created a new assembly line and did away with some conveyors and created 280 computerized controlled AGVs. And later in that decade, they created, they developed a, the unit load vehicles. In 1980, the term AGV or automatic guided vehicles was coined, and that's what they go by today. In 1987, 1989, laser guided and controlled AGVs were introduced. If you look in the bottom picture, the wide AGV with the blue sensor up top, this is for the laser guidance that's triangulating around the different reflectors to confirm its position that it's in. Uh, and that confirms what the position it should be. If not, some a fault would occur. 2003, the AGVs were able to change paths and this really changed the, the outlook for supply chain logistics using robotics. We got ours in 2005. Um, so shortly after they were able to change paths, we went fully automated, automated warehouse. A robot safe and ANSI defines this. Uh, ANSI is uh, American National Standards Institute and B56.5 section 8.10.2. Uh, every AGV has to have a emergency push button mushroom style easily accessible. Um, it, uh, there's a loss of the guide path which is off that laser sensor that we talked about that sits on top of the robot. Um, the system will shut down. It has a fail safe braking system in case there's a power outage it just will come to a stop very quickly. It has collision avoidance the, and that's just sensors around the robot um, capacitive sensors looking for uh, detecting anything that uh, should not be there. Beams and stuff like that in the warehouse it will go around because they've already been mapped out. This is this picture is actually a, one of our AGVs picking up uh, two unit loads of uh, pallets. The, the red area is uh, marked the, to signify to the, an employee standing in that area that's a danger zone. When the robot gets so close to picking up the unit loads, it will turn off the sensors looking for a collision um, because it's not expecting a collision to happen there. Uh, so we paint them for safety reasons. If a AGV does fall out, then uh, a technician will have to reset it or it won't, it won't restart itself. Types of AGVs, um, unit loads, that's mainly what we use our AGVs for. I'm going to attach a YouTube link to the discussion post and to this presentation. Um, and you can see actually the AGV in work. Assembly lines is what Volvo was using. You see a lot of car manufacturers using AGVs and assembly lines. Truck loading, we actually have truck loading in our plan as well with automatic guided vehicles. Inventory control, the AGVs can stage material. And they basically really impact the efficiency in the, the supply chain by uh, storing material and, uh, and with the material management. Towing vehicles is, is what was originally created by the Barrett Corporation. Uh, we currently don't have none of them. The efficiency of the AGVs, you know, decreased cycle times, uh, which increased in, uh, efficiency. The, basically they can map out the shortest path and they don't need, um, you know, a, a big area to get around as a, like a human forklift driver would. 
you know, you got just in time delivery, multiple SKUs coming to uh, different trucks in the warehouse that needs to be delivered. These AGVs can uh, make sure that that product is there to be loaded just in time. They're predictable. Uh, they're easy to manage with software and improve safety and ergonomics where you know you've got human forklift drivers where they have to turn around they can't drive with the load facing frontward and which causes neck and back injuries uh, just getting on and off a forklift uh, not be able to uh, see somebody standing in front or damaging a, a forklift um, so the safety and ergonomics piece is a big piece of the efficiency Efficient routes, um, AGVs are going to find the shortest route to take, the most uh, convenient route. They can tell, you know, if another AGV, there's a kind of a traffic jam going on somewhere, then they'll, they'll take a different route or, or pause to, to get to their location. How do they improve manufacturing and reduce labor costs? You know, labor costs goes up, it, especially in union type environments where the, there's, there's, you know, it's cost a lot to have a forklift driver. Uh, and the cost of AGVs are actually starting to decrease uh, because there's such a competitive market. Order accuracy, it, it will go, you know, get the exact product and those where all the product is stored at in the warehouse, all that's mapped out. You know, the guide path is manageable if you got, you know, a new selection, new area where you put an inventory at. Increased productivity, these, you know, machines, they don't need brakes. They run 24 seven, they change their own batteries automatically. Um, the only way there's really human interaction of these is either like a maintenance or just a fault where somebody's got to come reset one. You got less floor space. Um, they don't need as, as as big as areas as what you would normally would with uh, some forklift drivers. So that's more space for uh, inventory management. You got data tracking for efficiency improvements. Um, so it's, you know, it's real time data and how long, you know, what's the most efficient path to get the product to the truck and what's the cycle times. And return on investment gains is huge with the uh, robots. Is you know, we, we, we had a 26% return on investment and, uh, and we originally um, invested about 30 million back in 20, 2005 and that paid for itself fairly quickly. You know, future forecast, uh, the AGV market, they're forecasting that, you know, the, the units is going to increase significantly over the next eight, ten years. Uh, and this map is just actually go to 2025 um, with the cost. And, but so it makes a very competitive market, uh, the demand. For AGVs. In conclusion, you know there's different manufacturers of the of the robots and AGVs, and, and you know, safety and ergonomics, uh, order accuracy, technical job creation is uh, is big. And, you know, taking kind of an unskilled worker or a forklift driver and creating technical jobs, which you know, I see is a, a big plus. Cost benefits. Uh, you know, robots don't have to have insurance, they don't have to have health care. Um, but you know, as, as far as the, the productivity of a robot and the efficiency is, is where really where the cost benefits really come into play. You know, there's a big competitive uh, AGV market, and, which is, um, I think, big because it's going to drive price down and drive an uh, increase in technology. And you know, the future demand is. Um, a lot more warehouses are going to be going to this. Amazon's a, a big leader in robotics into their warehouses and, you know, robots following operators around and and just the whole AGVs, you know, they can pick up uh, more weight. They can do different things that's, that's, that's challenging for, you know, uh, human interaction. And then uh, you can use this to, to help keep uh, the supply chain more, more efficient and getting to the customer what they want um, in an efficient way. Thank you for your time.